Hi, this is Dustin, owner of Ridgeline Aquatics. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the huge group of coral that fall under the genus Acropora. We're going to be talking about structure and growth patterns, care requirements, feeding, parasites and diseases, as well as coral coloration. Acropora are probably the single most iconic group of coral. When most non-reefers think of coral, chances are they imagine Acropora. In fact, when we had our company logo designed, I only told the designer that I wanted an image of a coral growing at the base of a mountain ridge. As you can see, many of the silhouettes she chose look an awful lot like Acropora. Acropora are a large group of corals commonly referred to as SPS, or small polyp stony corals. In scientific classification, Acropora is a genus. There are over 149 different species that fall under the genus Acropora. While all species share similarities, there are also important differences in both appearance and specific care requirements. All Acropora form calcium skeletons upon which they grow. All Acropora host photosynthetic zoanthellae in order to gather energy from light. And all Acropora have polyps capable of catching tiny particles of food from the water. While all Acropora have the same basic blueprint, their specific growth patterns can cause certain species to look very different from others. Let's take a look at a few common growth patterns. Staghorn Acropora will grow long, thick branches at odd angles. With some imagination, these corals look a bit like a deer's antlers. Tabling Acropora will create a relatively flat structure. These species prefer to grow outward rather than simply up. Branching, or arborescent Acropora, will create branches, and their final shape will look a bit like a tree or a bush. While genetics will dictate the shape a coral wants to take, water flow can also make a difference. Constant flow in one direction will impact coral shape. It is always a good idea to understand your coral's future growth patterns when placing it in your aquarium. Knowing what to expect will allow you to position it and its neighbors in the best possible locations. Acropora have some of the most exacting care requirements and historically have been some of the most difficult, if not impossible, corals to keep. In fact, when people discuss the difficulty of SPS corals, they are generally describing Acropora as opposed to some of the other members of the SPS category. For example, Montipora, which is a fairly easy coral to keep. Acropora require incredibly stable water parameters, very high light, and very high water flow. Daily dosing of calcium, alkalinity, and possibly magnesium is often required to keep levels stable. Quality high output lighting is a must because, as a group, Acropora require very bright light for a long-term success. This, however, is an area with high variability among species. Not all species of Acropora require the same intensity of light. When purchasing a new addition, find out how much light the coral was kept under and try to match the intensity and color spectrum. Different light intensities and spectra can have a dramatic impact on the color exhibited by these corals. Direct feeding of Acropora is not something everyone does. Some people never feed and have beautiful corals, while others must feed every few days or they notice an impact on the color and health of their corals. Personally, I recommend target feeding Acropora at least once a week, especially if you have near undetectable levels of nitrate and phosphate. A targeted feeding provides nutrients for your coral and should have a nominal impact on your entire system. It is generally best to feed at night because that is when feeding tentacles are usually out the farthest. Let's go over some of the most common causes of Acropora decline. First, we should talk about parasites. There are a few common pests you should always watch out for on new arrivals. Acropora eating nudibranchs can absolutely decimate the coral in your tank. Always dip and check new additions for this annoying pest. Pay special attention to the base and undersides of colonies, and look for eggs as well. Products such as Coral RX do a good job killing adults, but will not kill eggs. Red bugs are another common pest. Be sure to keep a magnifying glass handy and double check all new arrivals. As with nudibranchs, the eggs are often unaffected by chemical treatments. After parasites, there are two other common problems facing Acropora. Rapid tissue necrosis, RTN, and slow tissue necrosis, STN, will cause a loss of tissue in a band that will work its way throughout an entire coral colony. 
the cause of these problems is not always clear, but often can be traced to poor water quality or changes in water chemistry. RTN is usually attributed to a bacterial infection. Speed is important when treating this disease, as your colony could be entirely wiped out within the space of a few hours. Treatments often involve physical removal of infected branches a few inches into healthy skin and dipping the coral in medicine. The coral should be carefully moved to a quarantine tank because the infection can and will spread to other corals in your system. STN is much slower. Over weeks or months, you may notice the slow march of tissue loss spreading around your coral. Causes of STN are much less clear, but check water parameters, look for parasites, make sure other corals are not the cause, and make sure you have adequate water flow and light. Before we leave, let's talk about acropora coloration. Color is obviously one of the most sought after traits we look for in corals to add to our tanks. With acropora, nurturing and maintaining vibrant colors can cause no end of frustration for one simple reason. Acropora coloration is tied heavily to light, water stability, and water flow. As we noted earlier, light intensity and spectra can greatly influence the colors a coral develops. If you notice your acropora is turning brown, chances are your light is too dim or you have excess nutrients in your system. Dial up the intensity if possible or move your coral to a brighter location in the tank. Also check nitrate and phosphate levels. Coral that is becoming more pale often has the opposite problem, too much light or too few nutrients. Turn down the intensity, run your lights fewer hours, and feed more often. Always maintain stable alkalinity, salinity, and calcium levels. Many have noted that stable alkalinity and salinity is an absolute must for good coloration. Hopefully, with a little tinkering, you will be able to bring out the full potential of your corals. That about covers the basics of genus Acropora. While there is certainly not a coral for beginners, if you've been successfully keeping other SPS coral and would like an amazingly beautiful challenge, then I strongly encourage you to check out this group. Tank raised corals are a great place to start. They are acclimated to captivity and are often much hardier than wild caught specimen. You can check out our selection at www.ridgelineaquatics.com. Until next time, happy reefing!